Hey everybody, welcome back to One Car Garage where we're burning rubber and smoking meat and we're back on the revival of the 62 Falcon. On today's video, we're gonna get the electronic fuel pump put in, get the car back running, get all that straightened out, and we're gonna finish the front end rebuild and brakes on this thing. So, here we go. Hey, welcome back to One Car Garage. We're gonna jump right into it and get started today. Today, what I'm fixing to get done, uh, we want to get this uh, electronic fuel pump hooked up and get the fuel system back uh, in order to where this car's running and uh, starting up and all that good kind of business. Something I want to go ahead and clarify. I am using just a cheap, and you can get these off Amazon, eBay, whatever, a cheap uh, fuel pump. There's a reason that I'm doing that, though. Uh, I don't fully trust this fuel system still. I don't know if we're going to have some trash or not. I am going to put a pre-filter uh, before the pump, but... If we wind up trashing a pump, I'd rather trash a $20 Chinese pump than I would an $80 Earl's or Holly pump, which ultimately will be on here. Uh, Earl's, Holly, Fawcett. So we're going to use a, a much better pump when we're uh, ready to start daily driving this thing. But for right now, you know, the cheap little Chinese pump's going to going to work its magic. So let's get started on getting this fuel system back in order. All right, as you can see, we've got the new sending unit in place. Uh, we still need to make our connection here. Man, I hate to drill through my new, my new pretty floor. Ah, these are of the 11 millimeter variety. All right, it's running. Let me give let me give it a kick here and let y'all hear it. There it is. Let's turn it off so you can hear me. It's running as good as an engine with a blown head gasket can run. It's hanging at about five pounds of uh, pressure on the fuel, and I'm good with that. I don't have a problem in the world with that. Like I say, not going to be probably staying with this fuel pump real long. We'll, I mean, I'll keep it there until we get the engine changed and. Uh, get a little bit closer to it becoming my daily driver, but uh, uh, let me kind of go you uh, show you uh, some of the steps that uh, that we went through. Uh, we had to run a hot wire over to the uh, the new little sending unit. So this sending unit that I've got in here, and I had to readjust some things uh, and readjust my T uh, and put the sending unit on top because it was going to be too long and get into this linkage, and I still wanted my oil pressure uh, gauge um, the little aftermarket when I got hooked up so you've got a wire that runs uh, to the I put in a relay and you've got a wire that runs to the relay you've got a wire that runs to the power source and you've got a wire that runs to the ignition um, and then you've got power runs all the way back to the back to the uh, to the pump so I did all that today it would have been extremely boring for you to sit here and watch me do that um, if you need a detailed how-to, I'm sure somebody online's got one. But just know that we've put an electric fuel pump in on the 62 Falcon here at One Car Garage. Uh, we unhooked the uh, line that ran to the, uh, the old fuel pump. Tomorrow when I come back, we're going to take that fuel pump off and put the block plate on it. Again, I'm just kind of looking at everything as mock-up for when we put the 200 in here. So 
Man, there you go. We running out of daylight too. I have literally worked on this thing all day long, but I count it as a win. The Falcon is back up and running. Electric fuel pump installed, filters all between the tank and the uh, carburetor. We're getting five pounds of pressure off the little pump, so I don't have a problem in the world with that. That'll, that'll work. But to me, this is an improvement to go to an electric fuel pump. Um, and, and we've got that uh, oil sending unit in there. The, the reason that we've got the oil sending unit in is um, if you were to get into a collision, there's nothing to shut your uh, fuel pump off. It could possibly sit there and just be feeding fuel to a wreck or whatever. So uh, with it hooked through the sending unit the way it is, when it loses oil pressure, it shuts off the pump. So it's kind of a safety feature. I, I want to build this car right as we're building it, so that's what's up with that. But uh, anyway, let's get started on some steering components. All right, I think what we're going to do today is try to get up in the interior and uh, get this center link unhooked. It's the one piece that doesn't look all together horrible, but, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and replace everything. So I will try to film while we're in here. It's just real cramped. Uh, you know, if you've ever worked up underneath the car, you know how it is to not have a lift. But at any rate, our first step is going to be to get everything busted loose and uh, get started on this, uh, all these steering components. New idler arm and new center link. Center link's from Maryland Mustang. Idler arm is from, uh, I think I got it from Rock Auto. It's Mevotech, Mevotech, whatever. Uh, everything's got alamites, grease fittings, whatever you want to call them, and came pre lubed. I topped them off with some Schaefer's grease. Uh, have got both of the uh, tie rods pulled on both sides right now. I'm getting the tie rods are actually getting a coat of paint. And then uh, we'll put new ends in them and put them, but I don't want to put them back in yet because so much more of this has to come out. And uh, I think I'm going to wait until tomorrow, which will be just a second for you guys, and go ahead and pull uh, some more of these parts and go ahead and get as much change as I can. I would think that the upper ball joints would be in in just a couple of days. And then we also need to get the, a set of shocks ordered. Uh, I can get them from O'Reilly's pretty much overnight, so that's not going to be a problem. But we are on track to get all new steering components and everything in here this steering will be good and tight so i'm happy to happy to see this happening all right guys here we go through the power of editing let me show you what we've done we've taken each component we've stripped it down to bare metal we've primed it we've painted it we've clear coated it with the exception of those drums i wanted them to be flat black and so we didn't clear coat them but uh, new tie rod ends, man. New uh, bushings on the sway bar. New shocks. Let's see. New ball joints, upper and lower. In the brakes, you've got new wheel cylinders, new wheel seals, new races, new uh, bearings. So everything in here is new. Uh, underside of the uh, wheel well, we paint, painted a flat black. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that. That's just kind of how I like to do my wheel wells. Under the floorboards where we had put in new floors in the car, um, we fiberglassed all the joints in there and have primed and painted that uh, flat black as well. It looks really nice. I'll be showing you more of that as the video goes along. But uh, you saw me start taking things apart. Guys, there's no way for me to really get good footage uh, as I do this process. So more or less, I'm just going to be showing you what I've done and um i'll get into a little bit more of how i done it so anyway here we go one side done on the uh suspension well, guys one of the things we've got to do is go ahead and get this side torn down and took apart because all of this is getting painted everything's getting painted uh today's not going to be the best day for paint uh we've got no drizzly kind of heavy fog light rain whatever you want to call it going on so don't know how much we're going to get done of this. Uh, hopefully the bottom doesn't fall out. I was really, really needing a good, solid day of work uh, to get this finished up. We'll hope for the best. So let's see what we got.
Got the spindle out. You got the lower control arm out. There's other videos that talk about this, but I want to stress this. If you're working on an early Mustang or a Falcon like this, get the right spring compressor. The kind that goes down inside with the hooks and the McPherson struts that go down. Don't use those. Get the proper one. I was shocked at how much safer and how faster this went when I got the right and correct spring compressor. And it's easy, easy to use. And it can save your life, to be honest with you. Trying to outrun the rain here. And I, I mean, I don't know if it's gonna rain, but it's just kind of really foggy. Guys, I can't reiterate enough that this is the spring compressor you want if you're working on an early Mustang or a Falcon. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than that, and it is very safe. I'm going to come up just a little bit more, give me some room to get that upper control arm out, and we've got this side tore apart. All right, we're good. This upper control arm's got a couple bolts in here that we're going to get a breaker bar on. I want to take one bolt off at a time and the reason is there's shims behind these and we need to put the exact amount of shims back in place that were there when we take them out so we'll take one bolt out that way if they fall to the ground we know that which side they came from and that's what I'm telling you on you that's why you want to do one at a time because when those shims come out you need to know there are four shims on the front uh, bolt of this upper control arm. So we're going to keep them separate from the back. Uh, anyway, the front fought me a little bit. Let's see if we can get the back one off. A little more dollar store lube here. I've had as good a results with that as I have with PB Blaster or anything else. All right, guys, you can see we got that upper control arm out. This uh, spring compressor utilizes the spring perch. Uh, it's good and safe. I mean, that ain't going nowhere. So we're going to get this spring out. And, uh, hey, man, I went to O'Reilly's. And uh, while I was gone, the sun came out. So my whole mood changed from dark and gloomy, rainy day to the sun's out. To we can get some stuff done. We got paint to spray. We got parts to clean. So we're about to get after it. There's your shot or your spring, and there's your spring parts with the tool attached. You can see how that attaches, just like the shocks, you know. But I'm, I mean, I'm telling you, that is the only way to go. If you're not doing this, if you're at home fighting with some other stuff, man, you, you just, you, you, you shouldn't. Don't do it. Use the right tool. We got to get all this cleaned up now. I'm gonna start with this uh, spindle. Uh, we're gonna take it to the wire wheel of persuasion and get it cleaned up and uh, get it ready for primer. I'm gonna wait and primer everything at one time. So I'll show you all this when I get back. Hey, that's what we were after right there. We just wanna clean them up, get it back down to, you know, raw metal. And then uh, when I start primering stuff here in a little while, we'll, we'll wipe it down with like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a suspension part and 99% of this you won't even see, so. Uh, but you know cleans up all that old grease and grime off there and they look a lot better once we shoot them all right here's that upper control arm one thing that will be missing next time uh, I show this to you well I will grind these rivets and pop this uh, factory ball joint out guys that's the factory ball joint unless they completely change these upper control arms at some point which it doesn't look like they did but uh, you know 61 years old she's done for so we've got new ball joints we've already done the other side so i know how to do this but when this part comes back it'll be clean and that ball joint will be missing all right here's that upper control arm i was telling you you can see where we just all you gotta do is grind those top of those rivets out and knock them out and uh we've cleaned it up pretty good it's not perfect but uh we'll wipe it down with some acetone get the rest of the mud off of it anyway and hit it with some primer and paint but it doesn't have to be exact it's just i mean it's gonna get cleaned up in here i can clean all this up but uh anyway there we go all right there's the spring perch it's good and nasty 
I'll show y'all when I get it wired wheeled down. All right, there's our spring perch, all cleaned up and pretty well prepped for what I'm gonna do with it. Anyway, we'll get ready to hit it with a coat of primer and paint them. And this is what you call being resourceful. Uh, I'm using an old swing set that's just laying around my yard for days gone by. I'm telling you guys, I'm not going to be real precise with this. I'm just, I'm trying to get a little, a little color on here, something other than rusty metal. So we're not looking for precision. Um, like I say, I already know what it's going to come out like because I've already done the other side. Alright guys, I'm literally waiting on paint to dry, so we're going to go ahead and put in the new races and uh, wheel bearings. I've cleaned these up, and uh, but we're going to give them another little bit of a cleaning here before we go in with the new. Alright, we've got it cleaned up. We're going to pack these wheel bearings and put in the new races. This is the kit that I've got. Uh, you may have others. You may have another way of doing it, but the Lyle uh, bearing race and seal driver is what I use. And it's the smallest of them all, the number one. These are little old bitty, little old bitty uh, bearings. And that's all there is to that. If you've got the right tool, it makes life a whole lot easier. We'll go ahead and put the back one in as well. You can kind of tell when they've seeded by the sound. I mean, it actually makes a different, a different sound. All right, guys, I'm not gonna do much to the inside of these drums. They're not in bad of shape. I'm gonna hit them with some brake clean. And I'm going to hit them with some wet sandpaper and just kind of clean them up a little bit. That'll work. I mean, they've got some ridges in them, but I am not going to worry about taking these and having them turned. I, I don't even know that anybody turns them anymore. I, I know some O'Reilly's do. I honestly don't think mine does, but I'm not going to worry about it because if they ever get bad enough, I'll actually just buy new ones. Uh, but for now, these will work. So we're going to pack wheel bearings, put the seals in, and go to finishing this side up. All right, we've got all our wheel bearings packed. And now we're gonna put in our rear seal, our wheel seals. This is what I had forgotten to order. And uh, we're gonna get these put in. I just used the back side of the uh, race driver. And that's done, son brand new rear wheel bearings and the new one front ones we'll put in when we put them on the spindle i couldn't be happier all right guys i'm gonna wipe the inside of this drum out one more time because i have used a lot of grease and i don't i don't want any on the inside so there shouldn't be any but just for good measure we're gonna wipe it out and just make sure there's none gonna be in there that could mess up our brake pads and it doesn't hurt to be clean all right that'll fit and we'll put in our bearing we'll put in our washer
I'm going to adjust on those, but I'm going to tell you something just from past experience. That don't sound bad, but we're going to adjust on it just a hair. Guys, that's where I want mine. Just barely grabbing, not really breaking, just really grabbing. And those will break in good. So we're done. I hate to do this after we've completely cleaned up this entire side, but I don't and I cannot get uh, any different caps. I mean, I can order them for like an exuberant amount, of, more than they're worth. And yeah, I mean, people say, well, if something's worth what it costs, but ultimately this is going to, all I need it to do is hold grease and this is going to be covered with a, a hub cap. So back on she goes. And this one is already beat to hell. It's already dented. If these are new, get you a piece of PVC pipe that fits right in this ridge and hit the PVC pipe. You'll, they won't have a dent one in them. Those will do for now. I know me well enough to know that I'll end up ordering new ones, but at least they're uh, sealed up for now. So this side is done with one exception. Um, this side is done with one exception. We still will have to hook up the sway bar. Then when we put the tire and wheel on here, we'll need to lower everything down, let the car sit under its own weight, and then find, do the final tighten of everything and make sure everything's lubed up. But for all practical purposes, this side is done. All right, this is my new eight uh, lower control arms. They come with the uh, ball joint already installed. I mean, there's really not any reason to not buy these, uh, in my opinion. They're new and the ball joint's fine. So we're gonna put these in. One of the few parts that I had already painted for the driver's side when I painted the passenger side parts was the strut rod. And I'm using new bushings uh, from Energy Suspension. I had to do some modification uh, and kind of trim this down so that it would fit, but uh, we can go ahead and put the, this in. I mean, it's been painted. Uh, this color is a duplicolor graphite, and then I've hit it with some Euro Clear, so uh overkill yeah but i mean i wanted them to look clean and nice so we can go ahead and put these in though all right guys getting ready to lay in another coat of clear coat on my suspension part spraying it with american concepts clear coat uh, through my spray it spray gun using a 1.3 tip uh, these are this is a new uh, paint delivery system cup that I've bought off of eBay it's just a no-name brand it's got a little adapter I really like these things though but uh, the spray it LVLP I'm spraying using a little small air compressor and it sprays just great I'm running like 25 pounds of pressure so <laughs> That's two coats. I really don't think for these parts that there's a need for a third coat. Uh, probably going to end up letting these sit and cure overnight before we uh, finish putting them on the uh, car because I think I've got the car close enough where tomorrow we can get this put together. It's not going to take long. Fix the brakes. I want to put the air shocks on the back. You know, I think we can get it done. Well, I'm going to wrap my day up the same way I wrap up every day at One Car Garage with a little Joe's hand cleaner. Today, I've really been in the nitty gritty, so I'm going to use some of the 405, the hand scrub. You just squirt a little on your hands, let it do its magic. It'll sit there and it'll break down that grit and grime on your hands like nobody's business. You know, Joe's hand cleaner has been proudly made right here in America, in Yukon, Oklahoma, since 1948. Their slogan's building relationships one hand at a time, and the stuff just flat works. You put it on your hands, 
especially on a day like today where I've just really been digging in on them suspension parts covered in grease and grime and everything else. You let it just work its magic and do its job, it'll break it down. Joe's Hand Cleaner, man, if you ain't using it, what are you using? Hey, Joe's Hand Cleaner, man, I use it every single day of my life. It just flat works. Well, guys, we'll be back tomorrow, which will be just a second for you guys, and we're going to see about getting the suspension parts wrapped up. All right, guys, here we go. Getting ready to put this uh, put this side back together. I've got the, the spring compressor mounted to the uh, spring perch, and we're going to put the springs together and get them installed. And it's just everything in reverse order of yesterday. And uh, it actually should go, assembly will go quicker than this assembly did. Or it should. We only have to bring this spring or compress the spring enough up uh, to where we can clear the uh, lower, the upper control arm. So I'll check it as we go here. The only thing you want to do is make sure you're in the correct orientation uh, for the spring perch. I don't know if I ever showed you guys the upper control arm painted, but there it is. We still need to put the upper ball joint in. On the other side, I did it before I set, the, set them back under the springs. On this side, I'm going to do it after. All right, remember what we talked about, your shims. Make sure you put the same amount of shims right back and the same shims on the front. It had four. There they are. So we'll put those back in. I like to go ahead and pull them down, not all the way, you know, leave enough room for the shims, but uh, just the action of putting it on like that or whatever will, you know, it'll, it'll make them fall off, so. And five shims on the back bolt, uh, three thick ones and two little ones. Well, guys, I'm getting ready to put the shocks in. I need to talk to you about these for a second because you're not going to find these shocks anywhere. These are one of a kind and they're the last of their type. Uh, these are special uh, Elvis Presley edition taking care of business shocks. These were the only shock that Elvis would ever run, and I've got a set for the 62 Falcon. So, one of a kind, I mean, it increases the value of the car at least, at least 100 times. So, uh, hey, you know, if it was good enough for the King, it's good enough for the Falcon. I'm putting new uh, hardware in on my shock towers. Uh, just the way they are, the, the hardware that was here was worn slap out. You know the type hardware where you go to your hardware store and get one of these little baggies full of stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a wall full of nuts and bolts from nutsandbolts.com. Maybe one day, nutsandbolts.com. If you're watching, I'd, I'd like a wall full of nuts and bolts. If you want to send them to me, I'd be glad to push your product on every video. Today's video and every future video brought to you by nutsandbolts.com. All right, now that the special edition one-of-a-kind Elvis Presley taking care of business shocks are installed, we're going to install the absolute cheapest piece of, anyway, um, tie rod in from Rock Auto Delphi. I'm sure it'll last forever. When I took these out, one thing I did was count the amount of threads showing. There were eight threads showing on each end on both sides, pretty uniform. The car's going to need an alignment, I guarantee you, but we're going to go back with eight threads showing again uh, just to get it as close as we possibly can to the alignment that it was. So uh, one of them is threaded left hand, one of them is threaded right hand on a Ford. I don't know nothing about a Chevrolet at all. Eight threads. And now for the inner ball joints, and again from Rock Auto, and I think I ordered a different brand because... Maybe they didn't have the uh, the Delphi's or 
They didn't have much. I don't, I don't know what the situation was, but I don't like these. Now, these are made by Ultra Power. Made in China. So, so is everything, guys. I mean, try to get something that isn't. But let me show you what I don't like about these. And I really, uh, I noticed this when I put the one on the passenger side. I don't, man, I don't think these are going to stay on. I'm going to have to come up with some moogan. These are hard little in, for this particular car, these are hard uh, tie rod ends to find, believe it or not. Let me show you. No castle nut. It's got a nylon lock nut. And, that, and I mean, you guys tell me, that, that may be fine. If, if this is fine and, uh, you know, it tightens on and it's not going to fall off, me going down the road at 120 because we know this car will go that fast. Uh, but it, really, at any speed, we don't want it falling off. But I just feel better with a castle nut and a, and a keeper. But I mean, there's like I've got castle nuts, but there's not even a hole in the threads to put a, a cotter pin through. So, man, I'm just not a fan of this. But maybe it's supposed to be that way. Put it in the comments if you know something better than I do. Rev over at Restoration, maybe you're watching. You ever run any tie rod ends that's got nylon lock nuts? Are you okay with them? Let me know. Other than that, it's a good looking tie rod. It's just weird to go backwards to tighten something. But like I say, one side's left hand thread, one's right hand thread. All right, there it goes. Got it put back together. I don't mind this one's pretty cool. It actually still has the cover that we all know. Have you ever had one last and stay on? I mean, you go pull up underneath it to lube it up and they're gone. But they look cool until then because they're red and they're race car parts. We're gonna put it in. All right, we've got everything in place, tie rod ends, and I really had to do some monkeying with this alignment to get it even close. It's gonna to have to go straight to the alignment shop. And I hope there's somebody around my area that can align an old rig like this. I mean, I got it pretty close here, but once we put the weight of the car under it, we get the uh, strut rods tightened up and some stuff like that, it's, it's gonna be out, so. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. It's all new components. But, I mean, I've got the tie rods sank all the way in just to get it close to alignment. So, they get this thing on an alignment uh, machine. There's no telling, you know, where it'll be. But, at any rate, we'll get it, we'll get it as close as we can. Uh, it'll work for us. And then we'll go to uh, the alignment shop. So, now, I think we're on the brakes, baby. All right, we're going to get in here and take this all apart. I was talking to somebody the other day about these particular little springs right here. They're kind of different than a lot of cars. Most cars have got the little dog bones, you know. But uh, these have got a kind of a different little deal here. Now, these... Uh, have got a spring and a keeper, and that keeper comes out that holds, these are your pad keepers, and you know, we'll lay them right there. These pads are in good shape. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of meat left on them. They may be old, and I may regret not changing them, but there's a lot of meat there, so we're staying with them. Not a lot wrong with that brake pad. There's not a date on them or anything. Made in Canada. I'm good with that. They're just a bonded brake. I don't see a problem with it. We're staying with them. All right, let's clean this up and paint it. Just like that, that's how you knock a race out. Bearing race and seal all came out. Nothing real aggressive. I'm just trying to get the uh, rust off of it.
This one's got a pretty good amount of grooves in it. I'm gonna let it bump, but that this one may end up need to be changed out at some point in time. I bet it'll work for now though. We'll give that another cleaning when we get done. Here in a minute, we're gonna go ahead and set these races. All right, and while we're waiting on paint to dry, uh, we've got another project to start here. These are supposed to be Monroe Max Airs, and I ordered them from uh, O'Reilly's. Nowhere on the literature, nowhere on the box, nowhere does it say Monroe. It does say Max Air, and it's got a model number, so I'm gonna assume that these are the right parts, but uh, they're air shocks. I've, man, I've seen mixed reviews on these, um, but I wanna give them a shot because I wanna be able to, I actually like the look of the the back end being raised up just a hair from what the factory is. And, and I understand these are load leveler shocks for, you know, when you're carrying a heavy load and stuff, but it's what hot riders have used for years. I think this shock was worn out. Um, you know, it seems to be not really shocking, uh, you know. So about anything has got to be an improvement. So. We're gonna get these in and give them a shot, get them hooked up. I've already got one side removed. We'll go ahead and put this side in. Put in new wheel cylinders here and I'm using new hardware for no other reason than I just want to. Uh, grade eight hardware to hold the wheel cylinder in, but that's what we're gonna use. We got everything put together on this side. I mean, and again, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't shoot everything. It looks just like the other side that I was showing you though. I mean, we've already bled the brake system, so it's good to go. I just need to get this thing uh, sway bar put in and then put it under its own weight, tighten everything up. And I don't see why we can't take it off the jack stands here in a little bit. We'll, we'll see, we'll check it out. All right, here's your sway bar end links from uh, Rock Auto. And you can see the picture's blue. Well, I opened the other set up and they're black. This set is blue. So if you ever walk up on my car, one set of them's gonna be blue, one's gonna be black. I don't care at this point. All right, well, there you go. We've got the car down off the of jack stands. All the front end uh, parts and pieces are in place. Uh, we've set the car down under its own weight, tightened everything up that I was waiting to tighten up. Uh, everything's done. The brakes, the brakes work great. Uh, air shocks are in. I'm gonna kind of show y'all a little bit more about them later. I really like the stance that they've given it. Uh, just kind of cool. But uh, the front end alignment is out. And I mean, that's not a big shocker because I mean, we replaced every component in there and we've got to work on some toe in, toe out issues, guys. I mean, it, some of it I can fool with here at the house. It will go to an alignment shop, but for right now, I need to get it to where the tires are, are parallel and running down straight. Even if they're kicked out or in, we can deal with that at the alignment shop, but I need them going straight. What I don't need is one going straight and one doing that. That's not gonna work, so. We're gonna try to do the old tape measure and get down there and tighten this and loosen that and spend hours upon hours doing that uh, to see what we can come up with. But we've gotta get it a little bit closer and fine tuned, worked in so we can get it to the alignment shop. So we'll work on that. There's not gonna be a ton I can really film. Uh, video's starting to run a little bit long anyway. Uh, so I'll show you kind of some before and afters. We got it close, just using a tape measure. And then, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I strung a string, which is actually some uh, electric fence, along from the back, the center of the back wheel to the center of the front wheel. We're close. I would, uh, we're gonna put another tape measure on it just to fine tune it, but I think, we'll, I think we're there. All right, guys, we got it. Time to lube it up. 
All right, guys, we got the front end completely lined up. We've got everything lubricated. Everything's in place. Now, there's one or two things I want to point out that, uh, that I'm going to have to go back and change. You know, I wasn't wild about those inner tie rods because they had jam nuts and not castle nuts. And that may just be me being silly, but I just feel a whole lot better if it's got a castle nut with a cotter pin going through it. So I ordered two more uh, inner tie rods. So they're gonna, these are going to have to come back off and be replaced. No big task, no big deal. But there's another reason they have to be changed. Uh, some of you might have caught it. Doesn't, I don't know. But on the passenger side, when I put the front end back together, I put the tie rod in upside down. It's just my own fault, inexperience, and hey, it is what it is. Uh, so when I put my pickle fork in there to you know, bust it loose, it tore the little old rubber boot. So it'll be okay for right now. Those tie rods will be in in a few days. When I get them in, I'll let y'all know about it. Uh, something I kind of glossed over on this video were the air shocks. And to me, after all of this work that we did on the front end and it's all safe, it's all new, it's all been replaced, the thing I'm most impressed with are the air shocks. I'm really, it's the exact stance uh, that I was looking for with this car. So I'm going to kind of give you a rundown on those. There's a thousand and one videos on how to put in Monroe Max Air. Uh, air shocks they're not difficult uh, one key thing I'll tell you is don't over tighten the fittings hand tight gets you there guys and that's all you want uh, these have been holding pressure at 65 pounds for the past 24 hours no leaks uh, I'm sure at some point they will leak uh, their air shocks are notorious for that but I wanted to kind of bring the back end up a little bit and give it that old hot rod stance it's what I was after so let's uh let me give you kind of a rundown on that right quick all right, I've got my valve back here in the in the floor of the trunk, and that was just the most sensible place to put it. And like I say, right now, they're actually holding it. They were at 60 pounds. I'm going to drop them down to 20 pounds, measure it, and we'll come up. All right, you can see here on the little slime bleeder gauge, uh, to where at 20 pounds. Let me measure it. And I mean, the stance isn't bad. I would say at 20 pounds, we're probably just eyeballing it. We're close to the factory. Uh, we're at about 20 inches right there at 20 pounds. So let's see where it goes. Okay, we went all the way up. I just wanted to check it out. We're right at 100 pounds, about 99 pounds. We're going to call it 100 pounds. Um, that's probably the most I would ever do, but let's see what the height is. Right at 22 inches, so that's about 22 inches, and that's actually, you know, I was at 60 before. I don't mind that stance. I just like that hot rod rake, man. We're at about 62 pounds right there. That puts it about 21 and three quarters, so that's that's kind of where I want to leave it. That's the that's the look I'm looking for. All right, there you go. I mean, to me, this is the stance that I'm after. Uh, I don't want it just completely sky high in the back, but a little bit of rake toward the toward the front. That's that's the style I'm after right there. I think it kind of gives it a a little bit of a sporty look, you know. So anyway, I think I'm gonna test drive this thing down the road right quick. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, be sure and take your phone in case you wind up walking. We're not going to go far. I live out here in the country on an old dirt road, and we're going to go down the dirt road just a, just a piece. All right, here we go. Here we go.
No, it died. shock right off the dead gum bat I believe we lost the line we'll see what's going on with it but uh hey I don't know if it's worthy of a full-blown restoration good lord what a Ford but it's worthy of a light duty good lord what a Ford you know I mean hey we're we're getting down the road we are a long ways from where we came brother so uh inaugural run of the Falcon I couldn't be happier doggone it with the air shock though hmm well we'll fix it well, there you go there. It blew the line off. I've already took the O-ring and fitting off. We'll put it back on, but I don't think I can do this one-handed, but we're going to try. Well, there you go. You put the cap on. This little O-ring goes on the line next. All right, we're back. We got it hooked up. Let's go put some air in it, make sure it's holding. Uh, the more All right, guys, that's where I'm going to wrap up this week's video. Uh, just so you know, we did get the air shocks holding air. They're holding at 60 pounds. Uh, you know, uh, it'll work for now. I mean, uh, it'll, it'll work or it won't. So a real quick recap, you know, uh, we got the electronic fuel pump put in. It's good to go. Everything's working there. We will eventually swap that out with like probably a Holly. Um, you know, just because peace of mind, I want a better quality one. But for now, we're going to let it sit there and pump fuel for a while. That way, if we wreck it, we hadn't lost a whole lot. We got the front end put in, all new front suspension parts, all new steering components, tie rods. We still are going to swap out those two inner tie rods for some better ones, and that gives me peace of mind. Um, I don't. We'll we'll include that in the video. It won't take just a second to do that. We got the alignment close uh, for doing an alignment in on the in the shop i mean for a diy alignment it's working brakes are rock solid shout out to my daughter sophie thank you baby for helping uh dad and being the pump on my on the brake she was the leg and if you've ever had to do that for your dad or somebody you've worked for you know it can wear your leg out but these actually sink in pretty quick and the uh, brakes are good on there you know we got the air shocks in and the air shocks as i showed you we lost an air shock right off the bat that may be something that we deal with uh the more you read about, I, I read about air shocks, you know, they, they can be problematic. You know, I had talked about maybe putting a Schrader valve on each individual shock. I don't think I'm going to do that because I do feel like with air shocks, you're going to have uh, air leave the system. And you're going to need to check those pretty regular. And so if you put a Schrader valve on each individual one, it's just not going to be, you're not going to be able to levelize them right. So we're going to stay with the tubing system. I might replace it with something heavier duty. I'm told that... On um, some Harley Davidsons that have air rides, you can buy some of their stuff and it's a lot better quality. We'll look into that. But for now, they're holding at 60 pounds. I like the stance and so we'll deal with it. Guys, we're building the car. Uh, we're having fun. Uh, we're doing it the way we want to do it. I haven't really fooled with air shocks much before. Hey, if they don't work out, they will come off. So anyway, man, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I know it took me a couple weeks to get another video out. Life, man, and rain. That's the two things. I uh, had a really hectic schedule at work that's just been kind of all over the place. I uh, have had a tremendous amount of rain in the south. And if you live in the south, well, maybe all over the United States, but I can just assure you that in the southeast United States, we have had a buku of rain. So I've had that kind of hindering me a little bit. But, uh, you know, I put out videos as I can. So... Uh, we're going to do a few other little things, but the next major project on this, and I'll have to get with Larry, uh, we're going to take it over and do the engine swap. We're putting the 200 and the 3-speed in. I've got the shifter that goes in the floor. I might go ahead and mock that up uh, so that because I don't want to tie up Larry's driveway, man. And uh, So we may go ahead and get that put in and kind of just get it mocked in place, and that way, you know, it's just kind of a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, at Larry's. Get it hooked up, get it put in, and get it back out to one car garage because I'm a very appreciative of him uh, offering to help me do this engine swap, but I don't want to tie up his spot very long, man. People, uh, you know, people don't mind helping you, but don't tie up their shop space, man. If you've got a car in somebody's shop, get it out of their way. And if you borrow tools, take them back. Let this be your reminder. If you've got a tool borrowed from somebody, 
take it back. People don't like loaning you their tools forever. Take it back. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate you very much. Hit like, hit subscribe. That's what helps the channel go. And man, leave some comments. You can say, hey, that's stupid, Mark. I don't know why you'd do that. And I'm probably just going to say, hey, thanks for watching, man, because I'm going to make these videos irregardless of everything. This is my hobby. Uh, all you're doing is following along with my hobby, and I very much appreciate it. Hey, that's it for today. I appreciate you guys. Above all, have fun. Drive like the next guy is your friend. And, uh, hey, man, just love life. Enjoy life. Get everything you can out of it. Hug your mama if she's still with you. See ya.